I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not such a, I prefer more fundamental terminology, I have to say. I mean, I, I, I think the, the jobs to be done thing is, is, says the, like underlying, I think, says stuff that I, I quite like. But I, I prefer actually the terminology of goals, I have to say. Because, and there I don't think you get into this whole thing of, okay, is it to be done or what does that mean exactly? What is a job really? Do you have to get paid for a job? You know, I mean, it, it can be a bit uh, fuzzy as a terminology. But I think fundamentally you should think about jobs to be done as goals. And do we have goals that we... So you said an interesting thing uh, before, Dan, and you, you said that, and, and, and many studies actually have been, have been, or research have been studying this phenomenon, which is, are you still there? Hello? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Ah, okay, sorry. I thought I, I thought, <laughs> I thought I was speaking <laughs> about it. Um, yeah, you, you mentioned this, this interesting uh, idea, which was, do the actions precede the, the goals or do the goals precede the action? And there, there are many neurological uh, studies that show that actually um, uh, you can see on a brain scan that the, 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 the conscience of an action comes after the action is executed. This is quite an interesting idea. So, so mm -hmm. when you move your hand, the hand moves before the the pattern of hand moving is actually formed in your brain. Yeah, and, but you, and, you and, get... So that I ju it just made me think of this. Yeah, but you get different kind of goals that, uh, you know, for for some that is, it's more like movement or something you're going to say, maybe the, the brain is triggered, but you have longer term goals, goals that kind of are set in a far distant future where you don't know whether you're going to do anything there's a very long chain of events that needs to happen for you to get there so i'm wondering if it's the same uh process occurring on a neurological level or what are the the, the shifts that kind of happen for you to get to a goal because it always comes with certain adjustments to your experience so for example if i set a goal i will have to kind of move around and maybe, you know, I forget about the goal, but I get very uncomfortable. And I'm like, why am I complicating my life? Oh, it's because I need to get to that goal. But it's like, goal seems like something you can forget from time to time because you need to focus on getting there rather than the destination. You know, it's the journey that matters. <laughs> I totally agree. And, and, and this notion of level of, I mean, I don't know if this is the right term, but this notion of level of, of abstraction in the goals is, is a kind of topic that comes up time and again in this general like jobs to be done or people like this. Um, and it, it is kind of a bit of an interesting, uh, well, it is a, a, a known phenomenon, as you say. So for example, you were talking about your goal or let's say your I don't remember if you called it a value or your, let's say, long term of objective of being human. OK, um, that's a very kind of abstract. It's not even really easy to define exactly. It's a bit the same as if you say, you know, feel at peace or feel uh, serene or feel, you know, or in love or all these kind of all these kind of things that we have words for, but are kind of very abstract concepts. The, the idea, this is something that has been discussed quite a lot in the job to be done community and, and the idea is that you have these levels of abstraction and one of the first things you need to do is to really uh, basically as the, you know, basically decide, make a decision and say, okay, this is too lofty, this is too long term, this is, is, is I can't actually build anything and actually help anyone with this. Um, so I need to focus on something that's more concrete. And so you, you kind of intentionally choose something much more concrete. Okay. So, uh, someone who wants to be at peace, well, maybe you can, you know, help him with, uh, you know, a meditation app or something, but you, you can't, you, you can't actually solve his problem of being at peace. Really. You can solve something much more concrete. Um, so, so that's, 
that's relative to this idea of the long-term goals you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think the the existence, of, well, our willingness to find jobs that are <laughs> concrete is based on upon our expectation of using that job to do something with it, right? And it's uh, it's a it's how we frame what is a goal. So this perspective, this this intention that we have of creating a job that is useful to us is the framing we use to define what is a goal, what is the job, right? And in that sense, it, it begs the questions, like, is it even a goal to be in love or to be, like, do you have this kind of, of goal? And and, and to me, it, it, it is interesting because, you, you know, in the, the Jobs to Done uh, community, they, 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 there is this discussion about hierarchy of, uh, jobs, that there are higher goals, higher jobs uh, that are, you know, uh, better in a way because they, they are uh, higher than everything else and that beneath it you can find other goals that are more concrete. And um, I find this a way of framing goals and, you know, uh, how we want to act in, in the world. Um yeah, I think it's it's a bit limiting in a sense uh, that, uh, you know, things can be connected, but not necessarily uh, in a yakika way, right? So maybe what is the job being in love or falling in love or whatever is a combination of a, a lot of things. And it's, it's more cluster than actually something, right? So... At which point do you, you know, do you define what is, what is what? And and here the only way we have to say what is what is uh, the usefulness of the of the definition that we came to towards what we are trying to achieve. And to me, this is where it's critical to, you know, to be mindful about that um, lens that we put upon goals. I think that goes back to the the intentions that you set and how aligned is your intention to a goal. If your goal is to fall in love, it might be a bit tricky because you'll go about it very functional. You'll try yeah. and dates and you know read books about how to fall in love and try and <laughs> I don't know I don't know what people do when they're trying that. But, uh, <laughs> like if your intention. I know some websites, uh, Diana. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure I'll learn a lot. Uh, you know, you, you get this intention that you set, and depending on your in, how well you understand your intention, actually, you are going to get a better perspective on the goal you you want to achieve. Because mm. if you if they are misaligned, you will go on about on websites and figure it out, and maybe just get a very weird perspective on it, and not really achieving the goal, but understanding that there's an in, Inherent need for you to be loved or to feel intimate or I don't know where your parents didn't love you pretty much and you just decide to uh, fulfill that need but I think it's it goes again back to this understanding the intention it's what gives you a clearer goal it won't give you the process but it will give enough information so you don't you know waste a lot of time and energy just doing the wrong things. I totally agree with, with, with what you're saying. I, I think that part of, as I was talking, saying before, you, you can add a context to, to these jobs. And I think definitely an important dimension in uh, the context is the actual, what you call intention or what we could call higher level or more abstract goals or jobs or whatever. So I think, for instance, uh, obviously, I mean, people um, maybe want to find love for different reasons. And depending on the reasons, they will want to achieve love in a different way. So the, the, the higher level reason, um, so maybe 
uh, I mean, love is a kind of a difficult one. I, I find it's not easy <laughs> to, to, to actually talk about that one. But I don't know. Let's say more get it, you know. Okay. Okay, it doesn't matter. Let's try and use that. But I, I think, as you say, Diana, the, the high level intention will also drive what, how you will measure the satisfaction of achieving the lower level goals. So I think it'll, it'll impact what metrics, if you want to talk in this way about love, um, what metrics will be important in achieving the lower level goal. So I definitely think that's, that's an important. I just wanted to add a, a small thing, which I think is very interesting. There's this, um, there's this notion of, uh, well, emergence, which I guess you, you all know about. And there's this interesting question, which is around this idea that you can uh, so so there, there are scales at which you can look at the uh, the world and that there's some kind of uh, that, that, that different scales even though they're they're related from a let's say a fundamental point of view you can't actually cross so easily from one scale to the other so typically an example people always give is going from chemistry to biology and life Okay, so there's rules of life and there's rules of chemistry. And there's kind of nearly a frontier there between the two that it's very difficult to, to bridge that gap. Even though we know that, you know, life emerges from chemistry, we can't really describe life from the chemistry perspective. So each description is valid at its own scale. And I, it made me think of this when we're talking about, I, I don't remember if there was this comment about um, that you couldn't really even describe what some of these higher level things are, you know, and, and it's true, maybe, and the hierarchy, you were talking about the hierarchy, I'm not a fan of that hierarchy, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it, it is, I'm not a fan of that too, I, I have to say, I, I think it addresses a bit the, the thing, it kind of intuitively, but I think there are many problems specifically because of this, because of this problem of scale, you, you, you can't connect chemical molecules to life for example you can't make a hierarchy there and I think it's a similar issue we face here in talking about goals yeah yeah well it's it's a uh, uh, it's w what I think is it's it's um, a simplification it's a reduction in that sense that it, it is useful to simplify uh, thinking about the goals uh, but because of that, it it uh, lacks this ability to make connections between things that, if they are close, to, you know, uh, arranged in a in a hierarchical way, um, um, creates uh, silos, and and then then therefore you lose those connections. But um, yeah, well, it's uh, I mean, it's an issue only if you. If you use um, all that concepts, um, I don't know how to say that. Um, I mean, if if you came if you came to the goal through research and um, um, yeah, through research, let's say it this way, if you came to the goals through research, you know that the goals themselves are just labels that you are. That you want to put upon um, what people try are trying to do, that are good enough description of what they are trying to do, right? So do, you don't really care about those yeah, keys and stuff like that, in in a practical sense. It's it's only an issue when you look at the the framework and the thinking in terms of uh, <clears throat> you know uh, uh, f uh, the framework itself as a, as a, as a philosophy. Of, uh, of thinking, but when it's, it comes from practice, you don't really care about all of the uh, those things, but because it's just observation, and then and then you just put some label. But then the issue is is that putting that label on uh, on those things um, brings a um, um, yeah brings a, a specific understanding of what those things are and therefore orient or direct uh, whatever things you can do with that understanding. 
like a, a solution, right? Because it's the main point of all of that is to provide something that um, helps achieve those goals. Right, and this is where we, I think we had this discussion last time with Mark um, as well, is uh, is the way we come to the, the job and and the way we define them. I don't remember exactly where, all the things we discussed last time, but um, but I think it's 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 where it's where the research and uh, the process of coming to that jobs uh, is helpful. A helpful, sorry. I'm also so I'm thinking about this understanding the goal. We all set New Year resolutions at some point. And then, you know, we are not committing to them if we don't actually understand the goal almost causally. If I set a goal without understanding why am I doing this, no matter how much of a motivation I'm receiving from the environment, I will not really be able to appreciate whether I'm being successful in achieving it or not, unless there's a very explicit metric for it. You have achieved this milestone, you're successful. But I think... I mean, this understanding of the goal is what de- makes us more determined into choosing that as uh, as our goal. Because, you know, we, we were kind of stuck around this ambiguity. How do we actually pick these goals? But mm-hmm. I think, the, the, you know, sometimes we are bad at picking them, but when we're not, it, it comes from like a, a very deep understanding on why we are doing it. And other times it just comes from commitment. Like I'm thinking about a PhD. When you apply for a PhD, you're basically determining your fir- next three years of your life to just work on this thing that you've decided probably overnight to <laughs> to apply to whatever, you know, whoever gives you a scholarship okay. or something. So that also becomes a goal. It's And you learn to be committed to it. You can definitely make adjustments, but, you know, this this idea of you either set a goal, you know, full-fledged and determined or you kind of choose it now and then you figure it out later that this is the goal you're trying to achieve and it also creates this, the attitude you have towards the goal if you want to just get it done you know get over it or you are trying to strive towards something this also creates a certain level of what the quality around the quality of if, if your goal is a design to design something you're employing different values, you know, like uh-huh. what are values, but like, you know, if I am trying to do good quality work, I will put that goal as, you know, something very meaningful, something that matters to me and I will follow on it. But if I'm just doing it from a value system, like I just want to get paid and I don't really care, then it will be a goal that will kind of stretch me. I won't follow it. I will just execute it, but not really follow through to with my own being, I don't know. Just but then, myself. but then the question is, who who decides what uh, what lens to apply to the understanding of the goal? Well, you decide, like yeah. Anyone? Well, yeah. I yeah. mean, I think we are we are shifting, I think, too easily between personalizing this and abstracting this as a tool to discover other people's goals, right? I think mm-hmm. we, we have to, and I think that's a, that is a, that's the difference between design and art in a way, right? Like in some, in some sense, if, if we, if we personalize this too much and say, well, that like, this is about me understanding what, what I do and my motivations and my goals, that's kind of for me, aside from the usefulness of jobs to be done as a way of bringing a framework into a context, dissociating myself from myself, putting myself in somebody else's shoes, and I'm uncovering what it is that is actually valuable in a given context that is not my own context, mm-hmm. right? And so that that to me is the that's what that's what is useful to me in this, right? And, and it's one of the things that like when you think about it as an alternate to say like user stories or something like that in a practical sense, 
<clears throat> the one thing that you can kind of appreciate about user stories is that they don't make a larger claim to some kind of bigger philosophy about me and my life, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's true. <laughs> it's, it's a way. It's it's simply a way of understanding, in a given context, how somebody who is not you is looking at a given situation, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I so I think that that kind of like removal of the self in this process is is vitally important right because it is the it's it allows you to break down and challenge your own assumptions about what you think is happening in a, in a given context within which you are kind of mm -hmm. parachuted right mm -hmm. you don't actually kind of exist in and so to me that's where the the value is is the thing that gives you the the kind of matrix that you can step through to get out of your own self Right. So as a designer, I find that like that, yeah. that's what I find the most useful about these frameworks. And I think it's, it's why the reason of my question, Diana, is who decides which lens to apply is in, in that sense. That there is, this is where lies to me the conflict is that someone who is looking at the other schools from from other people. So the one that they want to understand will put a label upon what they are trying to do. And this is exactly what I mean by who decides which lens to use to understand the goals, is uh, when you say the job is to do X, uh, is your understanding of what others are trying to do, but is it, you know, is it properly framed, like from people's uh, perspective? Or is it yeah, yours, it's, your perspective upon what others are trying to do? And this is exactly where, to me, lies the, the, the conflict of jobs to be done, you know, in, think, in that I sense. One of the things, too, that we can let ourselves off the hook on a little bit as designers is that we can never hope to have a perfect understanding of that. Yes, that, that's true. You have to accept that you will not have a perfect understanding of what somebody else's goals and motivations are or a full understanding of how their context affects them, but you can do your best to get as close as possible so that your assumptions are more um, refined and that you can test from there and continually get closer, right? Yeah, we, we want actionable goals. You're also getting this uh, more holistic perspective. You're, implement, you're embedding new, let's say, uh, ways to look at your customer, not yeah. just on the, the functional side, but like on the emotional side, or the, the removal of yourself is not necessarily you're just disappearing, but you're actually enriching your, let's say, sense of self by inviting the customer in through these different mm -hmm. ways that you can relate to them. But I'm also thinking, I mean, what bugs me about the, 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 the idea of goal in general is that it can be constructed. You know, you can have such a goal that is, you know, I just want to understand someone. That can be a goal. Understanding, having a deeper understanding of the customer can be the ultimate goal. And then performing within it can actually lead you to better results to these sub goals to, to, to be able to achieve them better. And also gives you a clarity on when to question your uh, assumptions or you know test different, uh, different hypotheses. So I'm just thinking of the nature of how do we actually set goals that allows us to make decisions in between? Because just like you said, Kevin, it's like who actually decides it's, it's really a tricky question. So having this encompassing goal that allows you to make decisions even after you, you decided on the goal, I think it's essential, so, yeah. I think the other thing too, is that you don't want to erase yourself completely because you are bringing something new to the process, right? There's, there is a can't see the forest for the trees kind of thing, right? So that as a designer, you may see that there is a trend moving in some direction that the people who are immersed in the actual context can't see and that you're building a bridge between that and what is actually happening kind of in the, in the context, right? Like you might see systems and processes that are in place and John Mortimer would be a good person to have here, right? Like, <laughs> like you, if you are, 
I don't know if local maxima is like the right notion here, but it kind of is that there is a that the imagination of the individuals in the given context might be bound by that context and you can bring something external to it, which actually enriches it so that you don't necessarily need to take the goal of the user as the, you know, as, as a, like a kind of a fait accompli, right? You can kind of mm -hmm. have it as a, as a, as a stepping stone that bridges between what the kind of local maxima or limit of the imagination of that context is into something future yeah right but the, yeah. for me that's just a, a question of the framing of the of the mm. of the goal or what you what you're saying is um basically i'm going I, i'm not going, okay this is the stepping stone this guy sees to get to here but actually i've got a better stepping stone which is here so he gets to here so what you're saying here is that all you're doing is shifting the, the framing. You're saying basically what I'm going to help people with is to get here, not to the stepping stone. But it doesn't really. So there's this there's this kind of idea that you know achieving a goal in a way is is always any 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 goal is also a stepping stone to another goal. Any solution, any problem, uh, is a stepping stone to another problem. Uh, so solving. One problem helps you get to 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 somewhere else. So, you, I I think so. For me, there is a bit of a question of framing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I would. Um, I mean, yeah. Go ahead, Mark. I was just going to say there was. Have you read um, the Ozan Verol wrote a book called uh, Think Like a Rocket Scientist or How to Think Like a Rocket Scientist. And there's a there's a story in there about incubators nope. about these um they went um so incubators are getting more and more complicated and they found that there was and i can't remember i'm trying to remember the exact nature of what it was right but they went to africa and they were looking at you know trying to improve on the incubators that they had there they got to the hospitals they realized that they were all collecting dust in the corner because they were too complicated to use and they, they ended up reframing the problem from like having to build a new incubator to keeping premature babies warm. And they came up with like a sleeping bag instead that could be kind of like recharged by simply putting a part of it in boiling water and reinserting that insert back into the, into the thing, right? So by stepping into the context, they actually like distilled that job to be done down into, into the actual job itself by actually removing stuff around it. And had they not stepped into the context, they would not have known that. So mm -hmm. I think, Jonathan, in terms of reframing, that's kind of the, the thing. Even if they were asked to go there to fix the incubators, which was both a external mission and a request internally, um, they, they ended up finding something that was more appropriate to the situation that neither the people in the situation nor the people outside the situation were thinking about at the time. Mm -hmm. oh, exactly. I mean, for, for yeah. me, this is, I mean, I don't know if maybe people will disagree, but for, for me, that is fundamental jobs to be done thinking. So you yeah. look at, okay, what is it really that people are trying to achieve? Okay, keep um, premature babies warm. That's the, the job. And you can use an incubator, or you can use special blankets that you warm up with water or, or whatever. And it, it really depends on the on the, the context of the of the people, but that is all defined in the job is not enough. You of course have then all the metrics that you use and, and the context that you have to take into account, uh, of course, um, to do the the process correctly. Um, so I mean, for me, that's a typical jobs to be done thinking. But um, I mean, I don't know that they actually. Against. I don't know if they actually employed quote unquote, jobs to be done as a process. There are, you know, many different processes that you can go through and kind of like first, like, uh, you know, um, what's it called, first order thinking and, and yeah. you know, first principles thinking and, and that kind of thing. So you can of achieve course. that kind of clarity through any, through multiple frameworks, right? And I do think that this example that you, that you, that you quoted, uh, Mark, is, uh, is one used in, uh, uh, design thinking course uh, as a design thinking uh, approach. 
result mm-hmm. of a design think- thinking approach, which is um, partially a lie, actually. <laughs> what, so. design thinking is an approach or dis- <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this example as a design, <laughs> design thinking approach, uh, because it, 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 it happens to be um, something that resemble uh, design thinking, and so it was reused mm-hmm. uh, as a good as a good example of design thinking applied design thinking. Uh, whereas at the time, no one was speaking about uh, design thinking when they did it. You know, so they they were not following a, a clear uh, process, um, um, as if they were. You know, uh, they went there and saying, "Oh, we'll use design thinking to solve this issue." You know, it's not exactly mm-hmm. <laughs> what happened, um, yeah. but, but it brings something in, on the table that I, I do feel is really interesting: is is that you need uh, to make sense of the context, uh, and you need to immerse yourself in that and in that understanding of the context, not only uh, from what others are saying, but how do you, how you experience as well. Uh, that context and it brings to the table this idea of, you know, uh, sense making actually, um, and and you could imagine um, uh, using um, uh, something that is, um, you know, um, well, um, like a pr- uh, not a process, but you could I- imagine to to create some spaces as we are uh, doing now to create a common understanding about the situation. And then um, coming to uh, some goals that that are helpful because um, they are actionable in that sense that that we we see a way an opportunity to do something that might uh, you know change the situation in 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 a positive sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, the other thing about that that's interesting is that the materials that were used to create these little, I guess, sleeping bags. Like yeah. that, that material comes from outside of the context. It is the meshing of a discovery of a goal or a distillation of a goal down to something very clear. And then the mm-hmm. application of, you know, very specific technologies that you have knowledge of that you then bring into the system. So there is a negotiation between the barrier between like you and it. Yeah. Right? Like you and the, you and the context. And, and that to me is a super practical and pretty instructive way of thinking about this, which is that you are not creating goals, you are extracting and distilling them from the context and then and, applying other things to it, yeah. And re- probably recombining. Yes. Because, because, because it's only possible if there are other, um, you know, external, uh, like engineers and uh, who knows uh, what role, uh, that can see a way to apply something that they know in that context that no one in that context never thought of exactly. uh, before. So you need to bring this externality to that context, but through something that provides uh, shared understanding. So it's where it's it's more uh, yeah it's it's less you know it's less a process and and more something that needs to happen at some point, right? Yeah. So how do you create this transposability and, and recombination of, you know, understanding goals, intents, and you need all of that in the same bag to to make something like that happen, right? Yeah, which is why it's so much more useful for me anyway to think about these things as separate tools that can be deployed in a given context rather than like holistic systems that you need to adhere to A to Z. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it just in terms of back to the like the notion of mm. goals, what we what we then have is not so much that we should be thinking about it in terms of creating goals in a given context, but of extracting them, like discovering them. So it isn't so much an act of creation as it is an act of discovery and clarification. Well, at least that's how I look at it when I'm looking into when I when I practically look into a context. I'm not I don't actually think of myself as like creating goals Mm -hmm. i think of it more about more as a a, you know as as something i need to discover and then and then constantly test because no matter what 
I'm still framing that discovery through my own lens, so I still have assumptions, and I can validate them as I as I go. The you know, in in cold terms, you know, the market will tell you, in a way. Yes. Right. Yes. But 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 what you are saying now and what we we are discussing is is the fact that we we uh, take into account this um, um, subjectivity of of the process. Now now it's embedded. Whereas I don't uh, from from what I understand and from what I know from the jobs to be done is uh, the opposite approach, where, where we create something that is objective, removed from subjectivity, right? Or at least there's some kind of uh, um, assumption of such thing in the jobs to be done, framework and community. So here what you are saying is, is something different, is that we know this subjectivity and we know we need to use that subjectivity to come to something that we can try and, 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 and discover. Am I framing in? Uh... It's, it's more like I accept the inevitability that, that there is subjectivity as being a designer and that you do your best to find objectiveness. You can't escape the fact that you are a human that in the end is going to make decisions and kind of be like the executive producer of <laughs> what is happening in a given in a given context, right? But that you you deploy um, tools and ways of thinking to mitigate that unavoidable subjectivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, maybe I, I was like one step uh, sideways, <laughs> not necessarily forward, <laughs> but sideways. Um, uh, in that sense, that uh, when I, I think of that as a sense making, you know, embedding sense, sense making practices within the process, you actually bet on subjectivity to come to something useful. In that sense, that you, you are using it. As a as a way to uncover and create well not create but uncover something that is actionable that is useful in that sense that you can do something about and try something and and then test it and and know if it works right mm -hmm. as opposed to well. Um, well, it's not only that you have a set of tools and that you are trying to mitigate uh, subjectivity, but you are you, you are using some tools that um, embeds, uh, embeds this kind of subjectivity. Like the fact that you bring many different people that uh, might uh, and and that you are part of the you know as an actor in the in the process. Uh, that you will be influenced and they will be influenced by you and you will be influenced by them and together you come to something that you can try is is the is totally subjective because if you try it uh, again and again with different people you probably will come with different results right okay, there's no like objectivity objectivity like in what you are doing and the results that you are that you that you will have in the end and I don't think it's necessarily a, a, an issue there. It's, it's just uh, a constatation. Like you, you can say, um, I try to extract something from a given situation that is uh, objective in that sense that uh, it's not uh, only about what people are saying on, on, and that you're trying to mitigate uh, how you influence people in, uh, in your observation. So you are trying to remove yourself from that. Or there's this other approach where you you are going full on subjectivity in that sense that you are immersing yourself in the context, um, you know, bringing people together to to try to do some to try to make sense of a situation um, and uh, mixing them their pers perspective on the issue, and then coming to some to a result that is 
only possible in that context at that point in time. And if you try again uh, with the other groups of people, will be potentially different, you know? Mm -hmm. So, what, I mean, I guess... The, what I don't know if it's clear what I'm saying, but... No, no, it is, but it, it's kind of like... It's almost like there's a there's a line between kind of individual subjectivity and collective subjectivity, right? That if you get that if you get enough people together, there is like a sum of individual um, subjectiveness that somehow I don't know. Does that generate a kind of something that's closer to objectivity? Is it because that's kind of what you're what you're saying, right? That there's that you mm. accept you accept the subjectivity of a group of people but it somehow it somehow turns what it does is it turns the the group into some kind of like collective subjectivity and if you mm -hmm. move to another group that would have a different kind of collective subjectivity and therefore yeah. even that that there's no like there's almost no possibility for objectivity right in that sense it's just more or less democratic subjectivity, I guess. I mean, democratic, like lower. Yes, degree, lower degree. because we are, we are not talking about facts. We are not talking about something that's yeah. that is external to the individuals in the end. Mm -hmm. You know, like about goals and attitudes, and some things can be uh, observed, but you know, <laughs> others cannot be right. So you can only uh, guess. And so, if you are more to guess. Uh, you, you kind of not like mitigate, but you are. Yeah. 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 No, well, I don't know how to express it. No, no, it's not, it's not a I'm not saying it's like, it's better, but it, it's yeah. You know, you you bring more perspectives, and therefore you reduce the you know the the the, the probabilities that uh, you were totally wrong about what you understand. Yeah, but I, I think that in any complex in any complex environment, part of the trick is, like, for lack of a better word, like bracketing, right? Like, this is the point at which I'm going to stop. Like, like the system in in. in chemistry versus biology thing, right? That there are overlapping concepts between chemistry and biology, but if you're looking at something, you kind of have to, you, you have to like, you have to put a boundary around what it is that you're looking at in any kind of complex system or else you can never move forward because everything's mm -hmm. connected, everything in recursive, right? So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yes. I think, yeah. So, so essentially, the map is not the territory you go in the green, <laughs> the bigger, the group, the closer you are getting to some kind of social thing. It's, it's like one of the questions was, you know, I was talking with a bunch of people several months ago when the ethics thing at Google came out, right. When they, when that, um, I can't remember her name now, but she got, she kind of got turfed out of, out of yeah. Google the AI ethics one. And, and there were all kinds of protests and stuff inside. And, and the question was then about the politics inside of Google. And the interesting thing was, is that once an organization gets to a certain size, it becomes almost a perfect member, mirror to society as a whole, right? Because the mm -hmm. diversity that you get within that collective becomes, it becomes so big and so diverse that it becomes essentially a subsample of, you know, of, of society as a whole. And so then you have almost like a representative set of perspectives, right? Where the map yeah. is closer to the, to the territory. And so essentially what you're saying, what, to, to get back to this kind of idea of kind of group subjectivity is that accuracy depends then on the size of the group. Right. And then you're kind of deciding, Sometimes. well, how many like like how big is this group of people that I'm involving in this process? 
to the point mm -hmm. where it no longer becomes a subset of things, right? We just have to accept that there's going to be a, a, a like a size to that. And I'm thinking off the, like I'm not fully, again, I'm in the same mode that you were a second ago. I'm trying to work this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think, I think there's some yeah, kind of, of uh, similar goals in the one of the approach, uh, which is um, testing your, testing the, the well, in some way, testing the jobs um, on the markets in that sense, like you, you do like a survey about how people agree with the fact that this is something they are, they are trying to achieve. And in that sense, um, you are, uh, you know, requesting a large group of people to make sense of something that they, they might or might not try to, to, you know, to achieve. The only difference is that you are in in one case you are proposing something that exists, and in and 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 therefore limiting the um, the discussion uh, towards uh, one one single thing that it already exists, and in the other case, you use the group to come to that thing. Uh, doesn't mean that it, it's perfect, but you, you use the group to, to, to come to that thing and, and, and then you can still test, uh, test this, uh, this thing to, on the market with a larger group because it's mm -hmm. easier to, to reach a, a broader audience when it's, uh, you know, um, when it doesn't require like active, uh, participation into a discussion, right? So it, when it's just answering questions, on the survey, it's it's way easier because it's it's less de demanding as a as an exchange of information. So I, I do see that they, there's there's value in that. But but going going full on this approach, you could say yeah, I use the group to come to like um, an understanding, then and and then you know formulate it in a way that is testable, and then test it on market like with big survey as, as uh, you, do you agree with with that that statements and and you propose things like and, and you came to it with with a group does it make it more likely to be to be true you know but uh you might understand things and and have perspective that you would have not uh, uh come to uh otherwise so but it's my idea. I'm not saying that it has to be done right. this this way. I'm just it's my understanding. Yeah. Jonathan, we cannot hear you. I don't know why. John, we've lost your sound, Jonathan. We don't hear you. No. <laughs> the mic is dead. Again, I'm heavily biased towards uh, this uh, because this is something I I I'm thought of uh, because of um, the discussion with Jonathan. And um, I have this idea in mind, so I, I know that I'm kind of directing the, my point of view towards this idea. Uh, but um, but I'm yeah I'm quite open to other way to approach it. Like um, oh, Jonathan is. Yeah, he, he, un he unhooked himself, and then I think he's trying to get back in so he can get his sound back. Yeah. You don't see him. No, he came and left. Oh. He's at the. He's at the. He's he's uh, He's shuffling his feet on the mat before he comes in. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm waiting on Jeanette and <laughs> technical issues. Um, do you have achieving our goals? Yeah. Do you have any any thoughts that you would like to share? Any one of you? Well, I got a bit distracted because I had some <laughs> urgent goals to follow up on. <laughs> <laughs> so I was kind of listening with uh, half a year. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I mean, sometimes it's really useful to, to think as a goal-oriented person. Designers are mostly oriented people because there's this necessity towards problem solving and you know, navigating certain complexity and creating. Creativity leads to, uh, I mean, it requires goals, even when it comes to a piece of art. But I'm thinking that sometimes loosening our, our, our grip on the, the kind of goals we want to set or achieve, it's really necessary. It's letting some goals come to us because part of, you know, there's one way to grow towards the goal. And it kind of, this is one of the most perceptible fa kind of parts of our experience if we were wanting to, to, to document them, let's say. But there's also this other growth that happens in tandem, which sometimes can seem to take us astray from the goal because it's not not all pathways to goals are linear and the growth yeah. itself happens maybe in a, in a very, with a very different logic. So to me, what stays is that while I care about goals and I want to understand their physiology, I <laughs> also want to, to live without goals from time to time to, to just know what it's like to not have goals. I think having that, as an experience is really helpful to making, to developing better goals, just living in this. On, on a very, on a very personal and practical sense, I have instituted for the last eight months or so, something called no expectation Saturday, <laughs> which, because I was, I was finding that I wasn't getting like, I can't do it on a, I can't do it on a Sunday because if you, if you say that Saturday is going to be your work day, then things will fall over and you'll have to do them on a Sunday. So I'm doing it on a Saturday. And, mm -hmm. um, and basically what I've done is, is just say, I, I know I have a bunch of things to do. If it, if it strikes me as interesting, I will do it. And if not at the time, I will not. And at the end of the day, if I have achieved nothing, that's fine. But I also won't keep myself from working if something like strikes me. And I found it to be very freeing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I have, I literally have no goals for Saturday. <laughs> well, that's good. I, I wish I would have only a day. <laughs> My life is like, uh, you know, you can set goals, but you know you're not going to achieve it. Sometimes you place goals on weekends and then they don't happen because your intention is not to, to force yourself. It requires too much will sometimes to just be within this framework of goals. And our will is kind of the scarce resource. Mm -hmm. I mean, time, time is the one, right? Time is the scarcest of all the resources. And so <laughs> it's kind of, but I, I've, I've like, first of all, I find it really odd that the fact that some of us like consider one day off to be like sufficient for the week. Um, <laughs> that's, 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 that's a ridiculous, a ridiculous thing, especially when I think of other people. I can't remember the last time I had like a quote unquote, you know, weekend, you know, where yeah. it's just like, you know, how do people, I know people who have boats who on a Friday go to the marina and then they come back on Sunday night and then they get like, they, I don't understand. <laughs> in the the epicenter sensible vacation time for humans you know like switzerland what do you get like eight weeks a year in switzerland six weeks a year, something like that like some crazy amount you know that's like 
it, I mean, it's not crazy. Yeah. It's actually should be sane, but from this perspective, it's a, it feels it feels nuts. Where people here get two weeks. You know? Yeah, I don't remember, Jonathan. What is the standard in Sweden and number of weeks? No, it's more like. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, we can. Yeah, great. Ah, uh, uh, cool. Okay, because I was having, having trouble. No, it's more like uh, five weeks. Is it five weeks? Yeah, and some companies are yeah. proposing like uh, more as a as a package, you oh, know. Oh, as part of a perk, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Jonathan, we're all we're all waiting for. Uh, <laughs> you yeah, it was, sorry. Uh, <laughs> my phone is totally not handling this Kumo space. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I had two comments, and I remember one, and I've forgotten the other one now. Uh, but anyway. Uh, the one was just because we're talking about we were, we're talking about subjective and objective. So I don't know if we want to go back now to this, but um, my question I, I have to say I don't quite understand. Oh yes, I remember the second. I don't quite understand what we mean by this because you can only be subjective and, uh, and objective about something. So what is that was my first question is what is this something that we're being objective and subjective about? And my second comment was, we did an interview with uh, Indy Young some, some weeks ago, and she said something which, unfortunately, I, I didn't kind of pick up on and I would have liked to discuss, because I don't quite agree with what she was saying, and I think it relates to what you were discussing before. She said something to the effect of designing for the average is violence or something like this. <laughs> I don't remember the exact words. And... I kind of understand what she, she's saying, but by the same token, you're always averaging something. Otherwise, it's, you're doing a bespoke service to everyone. And I, I wasn't really able to talk to her, but so this maybe relates to um, uh, what Mark and Kevin were talking about previously relating to groups and being able to find the subjectivity, which I don't quite understand, as I said, regarding groups. Um, I try to give uh, some kind of uh, I don't know if it's an explanation, but at least it's my understanding of what what I meant by uh, subjectivity. Uh, to me, I was talking about how uh, we conclude that uh, something is the goal that people in that context are trying to achieve, and in that sense, um, you can. You know, you can um, go in that uh, direction that you decide to put people that that is coming from that context, but people, other people that are not from that context together in, a, in the same room and come to an understanding, a shared understanding about what it is that they are trying to do in that space, okay? And that would be totally subjective to that group, this understanding, the understanding of what is the goals in that in the context that we are trying to to uh, act on, the understanding is subjective to the group. You cannot uh, extract like a general uh, uh, definition of goals in that specific context that works, uh, you know, uh, all the time. If you do the same exercise with uh, other people with the same intent of coming with goal, what are the goals, uh, an understanding of what are the goals in a specific context, then you, you might end up with a different definition and different understanding of what is what are the goals in that context, right? And in that sense, it's subjective to the group that created them. And, and to me, it's totally fine because it's the purpose of the exercise is, is explicitly to come to something that is subjective to the group. Now, you could say that there's other methods that allows you to come to objective uh, definition of, uh, of a certain context. But to be objective in, in that sense of uh, at least a, a f factually objective um, means that you have obs uh, you know, observable points in the context that can be uh, measured and and that can be, uh, you know, that are not dependent upon uh, one individual or group of individuals 
to say th this thing is is as it is, right? So it's where where facts are more in, important to me. Um, so to me, it's how I understand it. Um, um, I'm not saying that one is better than than the other. It's, it's they, they they serve different. To me, they serve different uh, purposes. But um, so my my idea is to be full on subjectivity of the group, and then trying to mitigate that subjectivity by, you know, uh, doing a survey about the conclusion that 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 group had. Uh, and, and then trying to, you know, mitigate it in that sense. So this is where what I had in mind. Uh, but I don't know if, Mark, uh, you were understanding, understanding it in a different way. No, I, I think that kind of got to summarize it fairly well. So I, but I, the only question is, is if we're looking at it that way, what possible method could there be that you can achieve objectivity right because because the, what we're talking about is not is the impossibility of achieving objectivity unless everybody in the universe would no <laughs> no, no 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 there, there, there's ways to uh, to, uh, to achieve an object a uh, factual objectivity but they will always be um dependent on, uh, on the um, instruments you use to measure and this is where, in, in well, at least my understanding in science is, usually they want to to use at least three different ways to measure something, as such as if one is known, well, as all tools they have biases, so you mitigate the biases, and as the tools are not uh, people that have uh, feelings and you know this kind of subjectivity to a situation, they provide points of data that are factual in that sense. Oh, sorry. I just meant, I just meant in that context of trying to understand, not, not, I don't think that there is an impossibility for um, objectivity generally in the world. Yeah. More like, like in a, if you, if you look at the context okay. of trying to figure out the jobs in yes. a group, that, that it would be tough to, yeah. by your definition, be objective. Yeah, you could have uh, facts that leads you to a conclusion, but that conclusion yeah. will be only subjective to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. people can come to different conclusions with the same data, and this is basically what we are saying today <laughs> well, in, right. yeah. in everything. Yeah. So my guess is, yeah, I agree with you. This is what I mean by that, yes. 